passion. The dictionary defines it as a strong or powerful emotion. Combine career and passion, and you'll be unstoppable. Right? If you've been chasing your dream job, only to feel more lost than ever, you're not alone. And what if everything you've been told about finding your passion is dead wrong? What if I told you the key to a fulfilling career isn't finding your passion, it's becoming so good they can't ignore you? Stick around, because in the next few minutes you'll discover why follow your passion might just be the worst career advice you've ever received, and find out what really works instead. Cal Newport turned traditional career wisdom on its head with this deceptively simple idea when he published his groundbreaking book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. And it was then when I watched the Charlie Rose interview of Steve Martin, where he, he said to Charlie, my advice to people, be so good they can't ignore you. This was a huge turning point. Be so good they can't ignore you. Don't worry so much about how you let people know. We've all heard it before. Follow your passion, and you'll never work a day in your life. Sounds perfect, right? But according to Newport, this advice isn't just misguided. It could be sabotaging your career before it even takes off. Are you ready to challenge everything you thought you knew about job satisfaction? If so, buckle up, because what you're about to learn might just change your career trajectory. The myth of follow your passion. How many times have you heard someone say, follow your passion and the perfect job will follow? It's a seductive idea, right? It paints a picture of a dream career just waiting to be discovered. All you need to do is tap into your true passion and everything will magically fall into place. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Most people don't have some magical, pre-existing passion just waiting to be unearthed. Think about it. How many people do you know who were absolutely certain about their passion from day one? The reality is, most of us are still figuring it out. So when we're told to follow our passion, it can leave us feeling lost, confused, and thinking, what's wrong with me? This is where Cal Newport steps in with a bold claim. The whole follow your passion mantra might actually be setting you up for a lifetime of disappointment. Let's break it down. When we adopt what Newport calls a passion mindset, we're constantly asking ourselves, one, what does this job offer me? Two, does it perfectly align with my passion? Three, am I truly fulfilled every single day? And when the answer is no, which it often is, we'll probably feel dissatisfied, stuck, or like we're missing out on something better. It's a little like being on a hamster wheel of career dissatisfaction. No matter what job you have, if it doesn't match your imagined passion 100%, you'll always be wondering, is there a bigger, better wheel out there for me? The most diehard believer in the wisdom of following your passion was Apple founder Steve Jobs. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, and you don't really love it, uh, you're going to give up. We all know him as the visionary behind the iPhone, a revolutionary device that combined phone, music player, and internet communication capabilities into one seamless touchscreen product. But here's the kicker. Steve Jobs didn't start out passionate about technology. In fact, had Steve followed his initial passion, we might not have the iPhone or the MacBook. He could have ended up as a Zen teacher, because that's what interested him early on. Technology wasn't his burning passion. But over time, as he developed his skills, he became passionate about it. This example destroys the myth that you need to start with passion. Instead, it shows us that passion often comes after you've put in the work to develop your skills, not before. The problem with following your passion is that it sets us up for unrealistic expectations. It makes us believe there's one perfect job out there for us. If we're not in that job, something's wrong, and work should always feel effortless and exciting. This mindset can lead to chronic dissatisfaction with our current work, constant job hopping in search of the perfect fit, anxiety and self-doubt when we don't feel passionate, and missed opportunities for growth and skill development. 
Instead of helping us build a fulfilling career, the passion mindset can keep us stuck in a perpetual loop of, what if? So if following your passion isn't the answer, what is? In the next part of this video, we'll explore what Newport calls the craftsman mindset, a far more practical and rewarding approach to building a career you love. But before we get there, take a moment to reflect. Have you ever felt disappointed or stuck because you were searching for a job that perfectly matched your passion? If so, you're not alone. And fortunately, there's a much better way forward. Stay tuned, because next, we'll dive into how focusing on developing rare and valuable skills, not chasing elusive passions, can reveal the career opportunities you've been searching for. Embrace the craftsman mindset. Imagine flipping the script on how you approach your career. Instead of asking, what can the world give me? Channel JFK and start asking, what can I offer the world? That's the essence of the craftsman mindset. It's all about developing rare and valuable skills, what Newport calls career capital. Think of it as the currency that buys you freedom, control, and impact in your career. The more valuable your skills, the more power you have to shape your work and life. But how do you develop a craftsman mindset? Let's break it down into four simple yet powerful steps. Step one, focus on skill development. What if the surest path to career success is becoming exceptionally good at what you do? Here's the deal. Instead of chasing passion, chase mastery. Whether you're a designer, writer, engineer, or chef, your goal should be continuous improvement. Think about athletes. They don't wake up every day wondering if they're still passionate about their sport. They get up and practice relentlessly because they know that the better they get, the more opportunities open up. As they improve, their passion for the game grows. So focus on becoming a master at what you do, and passion will follow. Step 2. Embrace challenges. Now, you might be wondering, how do I improve my skills? It's pretty simple. Take on challenges that push you out of your comfort zone. It's easy to get stuck in a routine, doing the same tasks over and over. But if you want to grow, you have to seek out difficult projects that stretch your abilities. Imagine a marketer who volunteers to lead a high-profile campaign. It's risky and they might fail, but by pushing themselves, they're gaining new skills and career capital that others won't have. The more you push yourself into new, difficult areas, the more valuable you'll become in your field. Step three, seek feedback. What if the fastest way to improve isn't through solo practice, but through something most people avoid like the plague? This is where things get uncomfortable, but it's also where real growth happens. To improve, you need to seek feedback, and not just from anyone, but from people who can challenge you and help you get better. Picture a musician learning to play the guitar. Practicing alone will only get them so far. But when they start playing in front of an audience or working with a teacher, they get feedback on their timing, rhythm, and technique, things they might never notice on their own. Feedback can be tough to hear, but it's one of the fastest ways to get better at what you do. Step 4. Practice deliberately. Don't work harder. Work smarter. It's trite, but true. Deliberate practice means you're not just going through the motions. You're focusing on specific areas you want to improve, setting goals, and tracking your progress. It's like going to the gym. If you do the same exercises with the same weights every time, you'll maintain your strength, but you won't get stronger. Deliberate practice is about lifting heavier weights, increasing the reps, and constantly pushing your limits. A writer might challenge themselves to write in different genres, experiment with new styles, or take on tough writing prompts they'd normally avoid. This focused practice helps them grow faster and produce higher quality work. Don't just show up. Practice with intention and a clear goal to get better every day. What's the big idea that Newport is trying to get across? Passion doesn't create skill. Skill creates passion. The more you invest in mastering your craft, the more control and satisfaction you'll get from your work. And as you become more skilled, you'll start to love what you do because you'll see the results and impact you're making. Okay, you've learned about the craftsman mindset and how it can transform your career. But you might be wondering, how do I put this into action? 
In the next segment, we'll consider practical strategies for building career capital and using it to create a life and career you truly love. But before we do that, take a moment and ask yourself, what skill can I start focusing on to get better at today? Because remember, the journey to a fulfilling career starts with mastering your craft, not chasing your passion. Career capital, your secret weapon for career success. Imagine you're playing a video game and you need to level up your character. You collect experience points, learn new skills, and make powerful allies. In the real world, we call that career capital. It's the collection of rare and valuable skills, knowledge, and connections that make you a legend in your field. Career capital isn't something you can buy. You have to earn it through time, effort, and focused skill development. You might be wondering, why should I care about career capital? What if I told you career capital could give you three things everyone wants in their career? Let's break it down. Number one, autonomy. Imagine having the freedom to choose how, when, and where you work. That's the power of career capital. It's the thing that enables the graphic designer with a killer portfolio to start freelancing, cherry-picking projects she's passionate about. Why? because her career capital allows her to call the shots. Number two, impact. Want to make a real difference in your field? Career capital is your ticket. Picture the software developer who dedicates months to mastering a novel programming language, one that promises to streamline processes in industries ranging from finance to healthcare. As he navigates the complexities of its syntax and paradigms, his expertise begins to set him apart in a crowded field, and his insights have the potential to revolutionize entire industries. While many shy away from the language's challenges, his commitment transforms him into a sought-after innovator, ready to lead projects that harness this powerful tool to drive significant change. Number three, mastery. With career capital, you gain a deep sense of competence that builds confidence and job satisfaction. Like the chef who's mastered exceptionally challenging techniques such as sous vide cooking. She's no longer just cooking, she's pushing the boundaries of culinary art and loving every minute of it. What if your career was like a bank account and every skill you learned was a deposit? That's exactly how career capital works. Every challenging project, every new skill, Every valuable connection, they're all deposits into your career capital account. And with enough deposits, you can start making some serious withdrawals. Freedom to choose your projects, influence in your field, confidence that comes with being highly skilled. But remember, like any good investment, it takes time and dedication to build up enough capital. Now I know what you're thinking. This sounds great, but what's the catch? Well, there isn't one. You don't need to be a genius or work in a super specialized field. You just need to follow these simple steps. First, identify rare skills. Look around your industry. What skills are in high demand but short supply? These are your golden tickets. For example, in marketing, data analysis is becoming crucial. Being able to interpret data and use it to make smart decisions will set you apart. Second, take on challenging projects. Remember, career capital doesn't come from doing the same thing over and over. It comes from pushing yourself. Instead of staying in your comfort zone, volunteer to lead a major initiative at work. Even if it's risky, the experience you gain will be invaluable. Third, refine your skills. Don't just clock in and out. Focus on deliberate practice. Work on your weak areas, seek feedback, and keep improving. Think of the musician who focuses on improving their rhythm by committing to an extra practice session every week. The more they refine their skills, the more valuable they become. Fourth, build strong relationships. Career capital isn't just about skills, it's also about who you know. If you're a writer, building relationships with editors, publishers, and fellow writers can lead to book deals, collaborations, and speaking gigs. Every connection is a potential goldmine of opportunity. Career capital gives you the leverage to build a career you love. The more you invest in developing rare and valuable skills, the more freedom, impact, and mastery you gain. You're no longer at the mercy of a boss or a company. 
you're in control of your own path. Now that you understand the power of career capital, you might be asking, how do I start building mine? In the next segment, we'll explore real-world strategies for identifying rare skills in your field and finding opportunities to build career capital, even if you're just starting out. Before we do that, here's a question to ponder. What's one skill you can start investing in today that will set you apart from others? Remember, the sooner you start building your career capital, the sooner you'll gain the freedom and control you've been searching for. Deliberate practice, mastery in action. We've all heard the saying, practice makes perfect. But here's the cold, hard truth. Not all practice is created equal. What if you could make every hour of practice count 10 times more? That's the power of deliberate practice. It's not about putting in more time. It's about making your time count more. Here's how you do it. First, push yourself beyond your limits. Deliberate practice is like working out. If you're not sweating, you're not growing. Imagine you aspire to be a professional pianist. Instead of playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for the upteenth time, tackle pieces that make your fingers stumble. It's uncomfortable, but that discomfort is necessary if you want to level up your skills as a musician. Growth happens when you push past your comfort zone, so embrace the challenge. Second, seek immediate feedback. Picture an athlete working with a coach. Every move, every technique is analyzed and tweaked in real time. That's how you improve at warp speed. Feedback is your secret weapon. Without it, you're shooting in the dark. So find someone who can give you honest, constructive feedback. It might sting at first, but it's the fastest way to improve. Third, practice specific skills. Deliberate practice isn't about general improvement. It's laser-focused. Think of the writer who spends hours crafting dialogue. She's not just writing random stories. She's zeroing in on one specific skill and honing it to perfection. So identify your weaknesses and attack them head on. That's how you turn weaknesses into strengths. Little bets, the low risk path to big opportunities. Deliberate practice is great for mastering your current skills. But what if you want to explore different options? Wouldn't it be great if you could test drive different career paths without losing the security of your day job? Little bets are like career experiments. They're low-risk ways to try new things, develop new skills, and discover what really lights a fire inside. I decided to take a calligraphy class. I learned about serif and sans serif typefaces, about varying the amount of space between different letter combinations, about what makes great typography great. None of this had even a hope of any practical application in my life. But 10 years later, when we were designing the first Macintosh computer, it all came back to me. And we designed it all into the Mac. It was the first computer with beautiful typography. If I had never dropped in on that single course in college, the Mac would have never had multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. So Steve Jobs placed a little bet on calligraphy that turned out to be kind of revolutionary. Here's how to make little bets that work for you. Take on a new project at work. Volunteer for something outside your usual role. It's a chance to flex new muscles without a huge commitment. Like the marketing pro who volunteers to help a colleague perform data analysis. It's a small step that could open up a whole new career path. Learn a new skill in your free time. Evenings and weekends are the ideal time for little bets. Take an online course, attend a workshop, or pick up a new hobby. Picture a graphic designer learning 3D modeling in their spare time. It might start as a fun experiment, but it could lead to exciting new projects or even a career pivot. Volunteer in a different field. Thinking about a career change? Volunteering is a great place to start. It's basically a risk-free trial. Like the teacher who volunteers at education seminars run by a tech startup. It's his chance to dip his toes in the water and make connections in the industry without diving in head first. Little bets are like career GPS. Each bet helps you navigate closer to a future that genuinely excites you. And the best part? There's no pressure. If a bet doesn't pan out, no big deal. You've learned something valuable. A set of new skills that could benefit you down the line. Building an amazing career isn't about having one perfect plan. 
It's about constant experimentation and improvement. Deliberate practice sharpens your skills and builds your career capital. Little bets help you explore and find opportunities that inspire and motivate you to achieve great things. Together, they're your toolkit for crafting a career you love. Action plan for designing a career you love. Down the road, when someone asks how you got so far ahead in your career, tell them you internalized the four key takeaways from So Good They Can't Ignore You. Don't chase passion. Develop it by mastering valuable skills. Embrace the craftsman mindset. Focus on what you can offer the world. Build career capital through deliberate practice and little bets. Use that career capital to design a fulfilling career with autonomy, impact, and mastery. Remember, the key to loving your work isn't finding the perfect job. It's becoming so good they can't ignore you. When you focus on building value, the passion and fulfillment follow. Here's a challenge for you. What's one little bet you can make this week to accrue some vital career capital? Whether it's tackling a challenging project or signing up for an online course, drop your ideas in the comments below. I'm eager to see where you're going with this. If you want to dive deeper into Cal Newport's transformative insights, be sure to grab a free copy of the So Good They Can't Ignore You audiobook. Links in the description. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more valuable content, and check out this next video which has even more tools and strategies to help you master the art of personal development.